So with all the rumors going around, it sounds like that this silly season could potentially be even crazier than we all had thought, especially if one in particular domino falls. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, give me your thoughts on this video. What do you think about these silly season rumors? Do you think some of them are true? Do you think some of them aren't true? And what are your overall thoughts about this potential silly season? Plus, give me any improvements I can make on the channel. So the silly season rumors have been really heating up as of late. You have some crazy rumors going around and apparently there's potentially a lot of numbers, a lot of teams that are up for grabs next season. Couch Racer posted this list right here. I find it pretty interesting. We're going to point out a couple of things we see on this list that Couch Racer put up. Couch Racer has to do with door bumper clear. I'm not sure if it's Freddie and and Brett or or one of them or both of them. I'm not I'm not sure. Of course, door bumper clear are NASCAR Cup Series spotters if you aren't aware. Brett Griffin and Freddie Kraft are both Cup Series spotters. And there are some very interesting numbers in this list. The first number we're going to talk about is actually at the very bottom of this list and I find it a surprise but not a surprise at the exact same time. It's the number 99, Daniel Suarez. Of course, there were big questions coming into the season. Was Daniel going to come back to track house in 2025? And a lot of a lot of people were thinking no. A lot of people were thinking yes. I think it was a very mixed opinion. And then very early on in the season, the second race of the season, Daniel Suarez won in Atlanta, locking himself into the playoffs. And it seemed like after that race that Everybody was getting reassured that we're going to get Daniel Suarez re-signed. Don't worry about it. He'll be part of Trackhouse in 2025. And we've yet to hear an announced deal. And Trackhouse could potentially only have three charters at max next season. And they have four drivers that they want to have in-house. So a driver has to go. And it's been no secret the last couple of weeks, honestly, pretty much all season other than Atlanta, Daniel Suarez has struggled. He's definitely lagged behind Ross Chastain most of the season. So it seems like Daniel Suarez might still be on that hot seat. He's really going to need to perform over the summer because I have a big feeling at this point, a couple of weeks ago, I didn't think Shane was going to move up to the Cup Series, but without how much hype is around him right now, how popular he is with the fans, with the whole community right now. I see there's a good chance that he could move up to the Cup Series next season. And Zane Smith, I know Trackhouse, Justin Marks, really want Zane Smith in one of their cars next season. We'll have to see how that works out as well. They also have to, pre have to prepare for Connor Zilich down the line. Then some of these numbers just don't really surprise me on this list, like number 67, I think we're all expecting for 2311 to have a third entry next season if everything goes all right with the charter talks. Of course, all the Stuart Haas numbers are on sale on this list. Who knows what's happening with these numbers, with these drivers, with these members of the race teams. It's going to be a free a free for all when it comes to these members of the NASCAR garage. I don't think the 21 or the college cars being the 16 and the 31 are a very big surprise either. Colleague has been struggling with sponsorship plus performance. They need to get, I feel like they need to get an experienced driver in one of those cars or something. They need to figure something out. And Harrison Burton has struggled ever since he got to the Cup Series. And we all know that 21 car might not be quite as good as the Penske cars, but it should be performing better than it has been the last couple of seasons. 
Another number I want to talk about, though, is the number 60. I would assume this would be an RFK third charter entry, and I'm not sure if this is going to happen or not. If it if it's still getting talked about, I guess there is a possibility of it happening. But from what I saw Brad post on Twitter and the talks I've seen with him, with the media, I don't think next season is the time for him to have a third charter. But who knows? He might get it really cheap and be able to get a third charter. We'll have to see. I guess it's not without out the realm of possibility. But I just I just see that as an unlikely scenario. And then you have the number 51. I thought this was a pretty big surprise. Justin Haley and Rick Ware Racing just getting together last season. Justin Haley has been really impressing in that car, but that could potentially be the reason why. Because Justin Haley has been performing so well, there might be another team looking to scoop him up. And if RFK does get that third entry, that's probably where Justin Haley would go because Brad Keselowski convinced him himself it sounded like to sign with rick ware racing because of the alliance that rfk and rwr have then we see two more non-surprises but very interesting to see what would be done with these cars because something is obviously going to happen with these cars because michael mcdowell is no longer going to be driving the 34 next season and the number 36 which is assumed to be the number for the third entry for Front Row Motorsports. There's going to be two new drivers joining Front Row Motorsports next season. The big question is, who are they going to be? If you want to check out my prediction, check out my Silly Season video right here on my channel where I'm going through my Silly Season for 2025 predictions. All right, to finish this off, we're going to talk about the last three numbers all at once because this also has to do with some of the rumors that we have on the table. At the very beginning of the video, I referenced that there was a domino that needs to fall for this to be potentially the craziest silly season we've ever seen. And that domino is the driver of the number 19, Martin Truex Jr. Because there's been talks the last, I think, three seasons at this point, will Martin Truex Jr. retire at the end of the season? And it's been a discussion point for the first couple of months for a good part of the season every year. And then Trix decides he wants to run at least one more year. He's kind of doing it a year-by-year year basis. I wish the media didn't make such a big thing about it. But at the same time, I would really like to celebrate Truex if he was retiring. But that's the big question. Like I said, is he going to retire or isn't he going to retire? Because the way the rumors are going, it's where these two other numbers come into play. The number 33, I would assume to be a potential third entry for Richard Childress Racing. And the big rumor that's been going around as of late, I even mentioned it in my Silly Season video. Ultimately, I do not think this will happen. But I've been hearing about it a lot. And at the same time, I think this would be a good match. Is Noah Gregson actually making the move to Richard Childress Racing in a third entry sponsored by Bass Pro Shops? Of course, Bass Pro Shops already has a relationship with Noah Gregson. They're currently working together again in the Cup Series. Bass Pro Shops has worked with Richard Childress Racing for a long time. But the way this has to do with Martin Truex Jr., if Martin Truex Jr. retires, that frees up a lot of sponsorship dollars for Bass Pro Shops, who I think would be willing to do it either way, whether Truex retires or not, as long as Gregson continues the performance that he's been having in that number 10. Then comes probably the biggest surprise number on this list, and that is the number of my favorite driver, Kyle Busch. There's actually been some rumors the last week or two that there's a potential joe gibbs racing reunion in the works ultimately i really hope this would happen i would i really hope this would happen i would love to see rowdy back at gibbs but ultimately i do not think that this will happen it sounds like the way rowdy's contract works it sounds like it's an option at the end of the year but it, it all sounds a little confusing drivers contracts at nascar always have loopholes so there's definitely a good chance 
that he could get out of that Richard Childress contract. But for this to happen, Martin Truex Jr. would have to retire to free up that spot. And we'll come back to the number 19 in a minute because we're not quite done when it comes to the number 19 and the rumors that have been going around. So if Kyle Busch would make that move, it would end up freeing up a spot for Richard Childress Racing, for Noah Gregson to either move into that seat or potentially even still get a third charter to move Austin Hill up to the Cup Series. A lot of interesting stuff, but like I said, for it to get really crazy, I think a lot of stuff is already kind of expected when in the offseason. Front row is going to look completely different. We know the track house could could potentially look completely different. We know the colleague and Wood Brothers are going through some stuff with their drivers. And there's still a couple of potential surprises in there, like a third RFK entry. This could be the mother load. If Truex would to retire, a bunch of dominoes could potentially fall. And there's even rumors that if Truex doesn't retire, that the next season... Kyle Busch could potentially actually have that reunion with Joe Gibbs Racing then. Very interesting stuff. And there's one more rumor to go over really quickly having to do with that 19 car as well. I've heard a lot of talks lately and I I didn't really think about this, but I guess it could be a possibility that the number 19 would actually potentially be driven next season by Chase Briscoe. And it makes sense. Chase Briscoe has really upped his performance this season even though Stuart Haas is clearly a struggling race team right now. Him and Noah Gregson have been the top performers at that race team. He already has a good amount of sponsorship and sponsorship dollars that he brings with him. And he's very hardworking. He's, he works well with his teammates. Overall, I think he's a, just a really good driver to have on your race team. Maybe not your star driver, but he's a, he's a good member of a race team. And I could potentially see this happening. And I'd say this is the only rumor that I've gone over that I could really see any shot of this happening. I just think I think some of these are a little outlandish. I, w- I would really love to see Kyle Busch go back to Joe Gibbs Racing. But ultimately, I just don't see it happening. And I hope I'm wrong. I would be ecstatic if I'm wrong because then I can... I can get all get a whole bunch of new 18 gear again. And that would be great. But ultimately, I just I don't see it happening. And the Noah Gregson thing, I think I see it as a match. But at the end of the day, if our if RCR is getting a third charter, I ultimately think they're going to put Austin Hill in that car because they've made that commitment to Austin Hill. Austin Hill has proven a lot in the Xfinity series. Ultimately, I think Noah Gregson is the better driver. But I just, Richard Childress just seems like a man of his word for the most part. He seems like a a loyalist. He's really loyal to the people close to him. And that's why we didn't see Austin Hill make that expected move to colleague. It sounded like it was probably about to happen. And he obviously had some sort of conversation with Richard Childress. And then he ended up staying. So I can definitely see Austin Hill. And he already brings sponsorship. I can see Austin Hill getting that third ride over Noah Gregson. But that'll do it for this video. I want to get everybody's thoughts about these potential silly season rumors. You saw all the numbers that I went over. What numbers do you think could actually have something happen? Are they you think some of these are going to be the same? What what do you think is going to happen with some of these rides that have potentially could be changed up next season? But thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short saying peace.